you guys saw this video coming miles away. Yeah, I know, most of you think I'm just doing this with the clout, and if you say that, you're kind of right. I mean, come on, uh, come, I mean, come on, come, come on, seriously, guys, uh, uh, come on. You, you saw the videos, right? You saw the videos I posted before, and none of them have the necessary likes and views to get me, well, where I wanna be. So anyways, with that said, Papa needs some views, yo, and with that, please guys, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more Masi content. Now, with the release of chapter 1044 of the One Piece series, Oda has officially broken the internet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah th th this shit is straight up ridiculous, man. Luffy has suddenly become the roadrunner on freaking steroids. My boy is mad on that juice. Believe it or not, I have actually been keeping up with the series and I can say with the utmost confidence that I am nowhere near the Wano arc. I'm actually currently on episode 601 of the anime and pardon me but I think that's a great achievement on my part. <laughs> oh please shut up. <laughs> I just realized I told you guys to shut up, oh man. Huh? Well, it's my achievement. Th th that anime is mad long. It took me two years to achieve that. And hell, hell I'm going to be proud of that. Yeah, two years of, of my life. Hmm, two years of my life. Wow. <laughs> but the bright side of it though is that I've been keeping up with the manga. And I can say I am seriously proud of what Oda has done. I mean guys, you have no idea how fired up I am right now. Yeah! And n not, not a lot of people saw this coming. But of course, uh, I'm just freaking kidding, yo. Everyone saw this shit coming a mile away. Yeah, miles away. So, the man keeps an ear out for all the fun theories out there. But but I wonder, did he just decide to throw us a bone this time around? Or or maybe this he, he's, just, he's just hella good at his job. Because this man gave us the perfect plot twist that remains true to the story and theme of the series. Not like another mangaka who shall remain unnamed. Yeah, I'm looking at you, my boy. Yeah, you did it. You, you, you definitely screwed us over. So, Luffy finally awakened the true abilities of his devil fruit and it is not what we all thought it to be. The devil fruit we all thought to be the Gomu Gomu no Mi has turned out to be the mythical Zoan fruit known as the Hito Hito no Mi Model San God Nika. Yeah! In the previous chapter, we were left with the antagonizing realization that Luffy is the legendary Joy Boy. That's right, the man who the world government has worked hard to keep a secret. It was confirmed in this scene by Zunesha as he remarked Joy Boy has returned and the beat of Luffy's heart symbolizing the drums of liberation continued to play on. It's time to stop! I honestly can't wait for the anime adoption guys cause to be cause cause guys you see Zunesha's voice it, it just seems like it's it's hella cool. Seriously. I've never heard it. So the boy was down for the count, but now this man just goes on to say he is having a blast. He should be down and out, but no, he's actually laughing. And in the most flexed One Piece way, everyone who had previously assumed that Luffy was dead sensed his presence once more. A crying Nami and Tama were reassured by the pineapple head himself, Mako the Phoenix, that Luffy is still alive. Which is great news to all of us. The properties of Luffy's devil fruit, however, resemble rubber and honestly, it was not the obvious choice for the mysterious fruit that the girls say were referring to. And now that we revisit the previous chapters, Kaido's remark on the weird properties of Luffy's abilities finally makes sense. But for the very fact that an elite member of the CP0 was transporting it finally makes sense as well. So which begs the question of did Shanks know its true name? And if so, is it the real reason Blackbeard attacked him? We all know that there is a specific devil fruit that Teach was after because the man went as far as killing his own crewmate. That's right, rest in peace Thatch, you were a legend. All for the power that this said fruit 
possesses. So I'm thinking that there are two fruits that he was actually after, one of which he knew the true name of and the other was out of his reach, as the world government had done their job well and hidden its true name. However, for the crew of the Pirate King, this devil fruit was known, as there is a possibility their captain possessed it. That's right, I believe that Roger possessed this fruit because when we revisit the final moments of Roger's time with Ray Lee, he said that he would not die of course the final words of the dying man yeah so we can just overlook that but i'm not gonna do that so in one of the scenes in chapter 1044 the gorosei mentioned the fact that zoan fruits seem to have a will of their own and hear me out guys, I believe in this case the final words of Roger to Rayleigh could have simply meant that the successor of this devil fruit ability would carry on his will. Not forgetting that the similarities between Luffy and Roger are quite obvious. If anything, Roger and Luffy have more in common than Ro Roger and his own son. Yeah, father of the year guys, uh, father of the year. You know what I love? What? Not giving a shit about you. <laughs> Zoan devil fruits in the past have been used to give various objects abilities and even to a certain degree personalities of their own. There are a few examples that are shown that even I didn't believe were truly objects and not just animals that ate devil fruits and gained the ability to, to well to do anything that, that they wanted. But we don't even need to look far because one of the members of the Straw Hats who was an average animal gained all the qualities of a human being after eating the Hito Hito no Mi model human. Now Chopper exhibits the same qualities of a human even going as far as well wearing clothes for some unnecessary reason. Yeah, that's the mind of Oda. Wow. Hmm. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. But this further proves the point made by the Gorosei. Now, Roger said that they were early at Fishman Island as the legendary weapon known as Poseidon was just a baby at that time. Roger was definitely Joy Boy in my opinion, but yet again, I repeat, in my opinion. And he did possess the mythical Zoan Hito Hito no Mi, but because they were too early, it was left to the future generations. And now that I seriously think about it, the great pirate era created by Roger was not just a coincidence. With Roger's death, many pirates set out to sea and the level of unrest on the Grand Line grew. It had never been like that in centuries. Now, this great pirate era saw the introduction of some of the strongest pirates that the One Piece world had ever seen. But not just that, the iron grip of the world government also got tighter and they became more desperate. I mean, I, I just think that, well, if you want to resurrect Joy Boy, it has to be in an unfriendly environment filled with a lot of restrictions and self-centered assholes that well, would oppose him. Yeah, you know, they just make Luffy's job easier to awaken his devil fruit. I mean, look at this asshole. The guy was drunk, wasted. And he started doing some creepy th shit with that kawaii thing. Uh huh. Senpai. Oh, that, that, that was that was really weird, Kaido. Like, never, ne never, ever do that again, bruh. And I have to admit, this entire chapter just got way too ridiculous, guys. I, I don't know about you, but <laughs> I kind of didn't expect this. Um, and honestly speaking, I'm, I'm having so much fun reading this. <laughs> Oda has definitely, well, outdone himself in this case. But one of the most interesting points raised by the Gorosei is that no matter how hard they tried to get their hands on that fruit, it seemed to evade them, almost like it had a mind of its own. But going back to Blackbeard and the final words spoken to him by the old man, he mentioned that Teach is not the man that Roger is waiting for, but I, I, I mean, come on, ser seriously, yeah, wow, he's not the one, mm, surprise, surprise. You see, let's be honest, as, as much as most of us hate Blackbeard, he has a few qualities that resemble Roger, but there is just one slight difference. And ding 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 ding, you got it guys, he is obsessed with power. And that's the thing, as someone to carry on the wheel of Joy Boy and Roger, he must love freedom above all else. Yes, there is that one time he actually said some pretty inspirational words to Luffy and Zoro, a moment that was confusing but it's beginning to make a little more sense. Blackbeard said, 
people's dreams don't end. A line that got stuck with me. Now, let's look at the facts of the matter in this situation. Luffy and Zoro were made fun of by Bellamy and his crew for believing in the One Piece and Skypea. But they chose not to fight. And right after they met Teach, who gave them this speech on how dreams don't ever end. Now, now I know he meant it in a metaphoric manner, but it's funny coming from a man who never sleeps. It's time to s- So upon leaving though, we heard Luffy's response to Nami as she said, hmm, I wonder who he is and well, Luffy responded, it's they. When Nami proceeded to ask if Teach had a crew they might have been referring to, there is no response and of course we can't read too much into this but I'm taking an extra mile and I'm gonna read on. You see guys, in the past, Shanks approached Whitebeard and reinforced his claims that Ace should give up on his pursuit of Blackbeard because he is much more dangerous than they previously thought. Because out of all the Whitebeard pirates, one man was able to remain silent waiting for the right time to strike. As we all know, that, uh, that right moment was when the Yami Yami no Mi was found. But how was he able to deceive even a great pirate such as Whitebeard for so long? We can argue this out and say that he was just as talented as Kanjuro in his acting skills but the thing is, every time I hear Blackbeard speak, he has different mannerisms and contradictory behavior. Going back to their first meeting in the bar, Luffy and Teach both took a bite out of a cherry pie with both of them reacting at the same time, Luffy saying it was disgusting and Teach pointing out it was delicious. Then right after this, taking a sip of the rum with Teach pointing out it was horrible and Luffy saying it was great. Now I know, the possibility of all the barkeeps of Mocktown having the same supplier of alcohol is pretty much well slim. But in the scene with Blackbeard's speech, we see him partaking of well the same type of pie, which was said to be the only one available at that particular bar. And we see him taking what presumably seems to be the same drink that he had previously claimed to be disgusting. But this time saying the rum is especially good today. This isn't the only time as we saw during his fight against Ace. He understood what he had done and how severe it was but yet he spoke to Ace like a dear friend, then switched it up almost instantly and became a villain. Again, this can be argued as him just being a pirate, therefore being a great liar. Another incident though is in Empire Down when he got knocked down by Magellan and seemed completely defeated. With him whining and squirming then all of a sudden he was able to bounce back and defeat him. But the question is, if he initially had the power to defeat him in the first place, why go as far as faking his defeat to get what he wants? If he could have beaten him and gotten the keys to free his crewmates, it would have been easier, so it makes no sense. It's like, let's say you sneak in popcorns from home into the cinema, but also buy popcorns at the cinema's snack bar before the ones you brought from home are done. Done! Repeating this behavior yet again against Whitebeard praising and belittling him yet again. So we go back to what Zoro said. They. Nami clearly asked about Teach and not whoever he, well, his crewmates are, so assuming that Luffy and Zoro made reference to his crew is also a stretch, but it wouldn't be surprising to find out that he has a split personality disorder that makes him live as a different person each and every day. The previous day, he found the rum to be disgusting, but the following, it was good. The thing is, Teach is under the impression that he is Joy Boy, because he too has a dream after all. He wouldn't be the first as, at some point, Kaido had a similar goal, and I have no doubt that he understands what it takes to be Joy Boy, but the rising problem with him is his hunger for power. Possibly a quirk from, well, his other personality. There is a fan theory that states that Teach might be the son of Rox D. Shebek. But if you ask me, it's a stretch and I think Blackbeard is just a, well, an example of a simp with serious insomnia issues, like serious ones. Much like how Luffy admires Roger, I believe such is the case with Blackbeard because he shares certain qualities with Shebek but in his case, however, he does also share some qualities with Roger. I, I, I know, you're confused right now. 
But unlike Luffy, Roger and Joy Boy who genuinely have and had the desire to sail the sea with their comrades and have fun making friends along the way, Teach leans towards the sociopath uh, well, with, with an unquenchable thirst for power and as such he is truly not the man who Roger is waiting for. Because while Luffy recruits people he likes, Teach recruits them for the power they hold and the fear they inspire. As I said before, Teach's pursuit for the mythical Hito Hito no Mi was not a mistake. He knew that the fruit in Shanks' possession was probably one of the fruits he was looking for but he failed to acquire it though he got lucky with the Yami Yami no Mi, I believe he is still looking for that power because somehow he just happened to know about it while stealing devil fruit abilities. Again, in his eyes, he sees nothing wrong with his desire to have the ultimate power and have the ultimate freedom. A contradicting idea as if he wants that ultimate freedom, he will not need to be involved with the world, with issues of the world and therefore be involved with things that might restrict his freedom. So Teach to me is the man who wants the best of both worlds. He seeks the ultimate freedom which Luffy's devil fruit possesses but likewise, he seeks the power to control the world's, well, the world's actions. So at Marine Ford, his, well, his actions served as a sign to tell the world that he was a threat to both the world government and pirates everywhere. However, his end goal is not clear but one thing's for sure, Luffy's awakening only makes him a bigger target for Teach. Now, Imusama hates Luffy and Teach in particular as opposed to the other supernovas maybe for the very fact that a clash between these two might destroy the hold that the world government has over the entire world. One being Joy Boy and the other, well, we don't know. And I bet that at the end of Wano when the new bounties of the Straw Hats are announced, we will see a small scene of that evil smile and probably a cheesy line like, it finally begins. Alright, I think I should stop now because I might end up connecting things that have no relation whatsoever and guys, just to remind you, these are just my views. My point though, however, it remains that the fruit that Teach possesses is a counter to the one Luffy possesses. As Luffy gives liberation, Blackbeard's fruit takes away and I'm still leaning to the possibility of it being another mythical zone type but I highly doubt that order is that predictable. Going back to chapter 1044, as the fight progressed between Luffy and Kaido, I couldn't help but just completely go all out fanboy on these scenes and let me explain why. Oh, hell no. The fruit's qualities have suddenly changed and it seems that Luffy now possesses cartoon-like abilities as it was referred to as the most ridiculous power in the world. With Luffy blowing up his entire arm much similar to Gear 3 and yanking Kaido back onto the battlefield much to his surprise and then he proceeded to spinning him around like a freaking cartoon. Well, and considering that just a few chapters ago it was a clash of two powerful serious fighters and now it's well this, I just, wow, I, I, I just don't know what to say. So Luffy proceeded to slam him side to side like Popeye then what happens next? Well Luffy's eyes pop out and you guessed it like a cartoon. And this is where I cried, I seriously bowed tears of joy. I wanna thank you. Your grace and mercy. Because guys, let's not forget that One Piece is not meant to be a serious series. It's meant to be a fun filled and adventurous story. For a minute there it was getting a bit serious but only a bit, like, like a microscopic tiny piece, like, like it's a bit a bit. But the genius of Oda brought it back. I for one am glad that this power has been introduced because it further enhances the joyful personality of Luffy. From the start of the series, Luffy's battles have always possessed a comedic atmosphere. From Captain Kuro to Don Craig, Arlong and even Sakurokodao and even freaking Doflamingo. So simply because an entire people are about to be crushed by an island with enough explosives to even blow up Slab D's music career, why should that change anything? I can only imagine how much fun Oda is having writing and drawing this because I'm having so much fun reading it. And I understand the growing concerns that most fans have about Luffy suddenly becoming unbeatable. But don't worry because as I previously took the time to explain, Blackbeard's role in all this means the story will still hold substance and power escalations will only get more interesting. So guys that's it and don't forget to like this video and subscribe plus hit that bell icon for future Marcy content.